Since Matt's favorite dinosaur is Deinonychus, our dinosaur of the day is Deinonychus, and its name means terrible claw. So Deinonychus lived in the Cretaceous period about 115 through 108 million years ago. The paleontologist Barnum Brown technically was the first one to discover Deinonychus in 1931, but he was too busy looking for a hadrosaur called Tenontosaurus, and he forgot all about Deinonychus, which he actually at the time named Daptosaurus. In the 1960s, specifically in 1964, Grant E. Meyer and John H. Ostrom in southern Montana found Deinonychus, and because of this discovery, they were the first to talk about how similar dinosaurs are to modern birds. Ostrom and Meyer actually found several hundred Deinonychus bones, and they described the dinosaur as an agile predator, which actually contradicted what people thought of dinosaurs at the time as slow and stupid. So it changed a lot of people's notions about how they saw dinosaurs and actually made some scientists speculate that they may have been warm-blooded. Deinonychus has been found in the Antlers Formation and the Cloverly Formation, and they've discovered at least eight Deinonychus fossils in Montana, Utah, and Wyoming for a total of nine specimens. Deinonychus had good binocular vision, giving it good depth perception, this depth perception is something that you need when you're a hunter, especially if you're going after quick prey, because it allows you to see exactly the distance between you and your prey so you can get to it quickly. It would also help if you're going to try to snatch at it or slash at it because you know just how far to reach out. This is different than what you see in an herbivorous animal where typically they have eyes on the side of their head which doesn't allow them to see as precisely and measure distances, but it gives them a wider field of view so they can see things running up on them from more angles. So it's really a quantity or quality question when you're talking about eyes. Deinonychus was very bird-like. It was lightweight, fast, and it walked on two legs. Some of the drawings that I've seen of it are very interesting. They make it look completely feathered, it had a flexible, curved neck and sharp, serrated teeth, which makes me think of like an ostrich with uh, crazy, scary teeth that could kind of move its neck all over the place, bite at you. It's actually been described as looking like an ostrich, too. So. Hmm, I win. It had three fingers on each hand, and on those fingers it had large claws. It also had four toes on its feet, but what really distinguishes Deinonychus is its second toe on each foot had a sickle-like claw about five inches long. It was also one of the most intelligent dinosaurs measured by its brain size to body weight, had a very large brain, so that combined with this claw would have made it a pretty scary predator. It was about five feet tall, ten feet long, and weighed about 175 pounds. And compared to some bigger Cretaceous theropods, Deinonychus had a weak bite, like if you compare to T-Rex or Spinosaurus. But it was still, the bite was about as powerful as a modern alligator, so still pretty formidable. Deinonychus wasn't as fast as other theropods, but it could run at six miles an hour. Dr. Robert Backer, who was actually Ostrom's mentee, wrote in his book The Dinosaur Heresies, which was published in 1986, that Deinonychus had many similarities to birds. And Dr. Philip Curry, who's been on this show, uh, has some recent research that dinosaurs similar to Deinonychus, such as Velociraptor, Utah Raptor, Dromaeosaurus, probably had feathers covering all or at least part of their bodies, or some, at least proto-feathers, which were used for insulation and possibly display. Deinonychus has often been confused with its cousin Velociraptor. In the Jurassic Park movies, for example, they say they're attacked by Velociraptors, but those dinosaurs are actually Deinonychus. So what happened was Meyer and Ostrom came up with the idea that dinosaurs are agile, and that inspired paleoartist Gregory S. Paul to create his 1988 book, Predatory Dinosaurs of the World. And in addition to some great artwork, he grouped some of the dinosaurs a little bit differently, and he grouped Deinonychus fossils as Velociraptors, 
because the two had so many similarities. And Velociraptor was discovered first. It was discovered about 40 years earlier than Deinonychus. So that's why he chose to use the name Velociraptor instead of Deinonychus. Paleontologists still think that these two dinosaurs are different, but the book was so popular, Michael Crichton actually read the book. He acknowledged it in the Jurassic Park novel. And he described Deinonychus in Jurassic Park as Velociraptor, and it stayed that way in the films. But one of the differences between the two dinosaurs is Velociraptor would come up to a little bit above the knee of an adult average male, but Deinonychus was a little bigger and would reach a man's chest. We'll talk a little bit later about Deinonychus's family, but it's informally known as raptors, and Deinonychus was one of the first raptors discovered from an almost complete skeleton. So because Velociraptor in Jurassic Park is actually Deinonychus, whenever I'm imagining Deinonychus, I just think of the Jurassic Park creature plus a whole bunch of feathers, because that's probably the closest thing to what it looked like, not the scaly green thing that's in the movie. So a large Deinonychus, being that its bite was similar in strength to an alligator, could probably bite through a human's thigh bone. Its tail was used as a counterbalance when it was running and pivoting, which would have helped it catch up to prey. Deinonychus fossils have been found near Thanatosaurus fossils, which makes some scientists think that Deinonychus hunted in packs. Dr. Curry, who again has been on this show, has theorized that dinosaurs lived in gangs and hunted in packs, and has been pushing the idea that predators also live in packs in, in addition to herbivores. Assuming that Deinonychus did hunt in packs, that means it could have taken down larger prey such as sauropods and ankylosaurs. And actually, Tenontosaurus adults weighed two tons, so it would only make sense for Deinonychus to hunt it in packs. Deinonychus had some pretty good arms on it, and it may have used its arms to hold its prey steady while it tore off chunks of its prey with its teeth. Since we've found a few good specimens of Deinonychus, studying them has given us a lot of insight into how raptors behaved. The tail has a rigid pole and it seems to have only moved at the base due to how the tendons at the tail overlapped with several vertebrae. Deinonychus used its sickle-like claw on the second toes probably to stab prey as opposed to velociraptors that slashed. They may have used the claw to stab in the neck and then wait for the prey to bleed to death from a safe distance. Or they could have used it as defense against either another dinosaur species or even other Deinonychus when they're defending their territory or trying to dominate the pack. Part of the evidence for Deinonychus using its claw for something other than just walking is the fact that it didn't touch the ground when Deinonychus was walking, and so it was likely used for another purpose like cutting or stabbing. It rotated its claw upwards when it ran on its other toes to keep it out of the way. If you want to see for yourself what Deinonychus looks like, you can go to the American Museum of Natural History in New York or the Harvard Museum of Comparative Zoology. However, both specimens are from different areas and they have slightly different shaped claws, so some scientists have speculated that these may be two different species or genera. Deinonychus is in the family Dromaeosauridae, and though no Deinonychus fossil feathers have ever been found, Dromaeosaurs are known for having feathers, which is why we believe that they were probably covered in feathers along with their size. Their family name means running lizards, and they are often referred to as raptors in shorthand. This draws attention to the similarities that they have with modern raptor birds. Dromaeosaurs had great vision and large brains and lived in the Cretaceous period. And they also had a really good sense of smell, kind of like tyrannosaurids and turkey vultures. They were mostly small to medium size, and they were bipedal. And they had long tails, many with rod-like extensions. And their tails were flexible at the base, probably used as a counterweight or to help stabilize while they were running. Dromaeosaurs may have been most closely related to birds. And they had feathers. Some of the feathers were long, some were shorter and more down-like, but the feather patterns were very similar to Archaeopteryx. And scientists think that at least two types of dromaeosaurs could have flown or at least glided. So dromaeosaurs had light skulls, sharp backward curved teeth, 
long arms and hands with claws, and sickle-like second toe claws that never touch the ground in order to keep it sharp. They may have used their sickle-like claws to climb trees or climb large prey, as well as for stabbing. I can't imagine being climbed by one of these things. That's I'm sure it was unpleasant. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. It's like those, uh, what do they call them, the ice climbers with their picks that they slam into the ice. Horrible. I guess if you're trying to take down an apatosaurus or something, you got to mm. get up there. Anywho, Philip Manning and a team tested the function of the sickle claw in 2009 by using x-ray imaging, and they compared how the sickle claw curved with the foot curvature of modern birds and mammals. So this curvature gives some insight into an animal's lifestyle with a strong curve, meaning that the animal climbs, while a less curved claw would mean that the animal spends most of the time on the ground. That group showed that Deinonychus had about 160 degrees of curvature in its claw, which would have made it really good for climbing. Some of the later, larger dinosaurs with very curved claws would have been too big to climb a tree, but they may have latched onto their prey instead. In 2009, Phil Center said that dromaeosaur toes may have been able to get through tough insect nests, so some smaller dromaeosaurs could have eaten insects as part of their diet, and larger ones, such as Deinonychus, may have caught small prey that was hiding in insect nests, though Center didn't actually test whether the claws could do these things. In 2011, Denver Fowler and his team said dromaeosaurs may have used raptor prey restraint, or RPR, on smaller prey, by jumping on the prey, pinning it, and gripping it with its claws, and then taking bites while the prey was still alive, and eventually their prey would bleed out and their organs would fail. 